so much to see, so much to do. At your library, there's a whole big world just waiting for you. At your library, there's so much to do, so much to see. At your library, if you're gonna go, then you gotta take me. Hey! Hi, everybody. It's Sandra and Tanya. And we're here again for story time at the Bay County Public Library. This week, we're going to do a salute to America. And we have great stories based on our American traditions. So stay with us, and we'll have baseball, apple pie, and hot dog stories. So let's do it. Hey, why don't we do our first story about hot dogs? And we have this fabulous book written by Mo Willems. He gave us permission to read this book today, and it's called The Pigeon Finds a Hot Dog. Mm. So let's see what happens when the pigeon finds that hot dog. Ooh, a hot dog, look at this. Oh, yummy, 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 yummy. I love a hot dog, yummy. I'm about to eat this thing. <gasps> May I help you? Um, is that a is that a hot dog? No, it's not a hot dog. This is my hot dog. Just mine. Hey, I have a question. Uh, okay. I've never had a hot dog before. Mm. What's it taste like? What does it taste like? What does it taste like? Well, they taste. Sensational! That's what they taste like. They're sensational. Each morsel is a joy, a celebration, and a fun. Yes, they are. If you've never experienced the splendor of a hot dog, listen, you should rip. Uh oh. Wait a second. Wait a second. This hot dog is mine. Let's get that straight. It's mine. I found it, and it's mine. Oh no, it's, of course, you go ahead and enjoy. Hmm. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, I'm good. Uh, Would you say it tastes like chicken? Can you guys believe this guy? Can you believe this? What? It tastes like a hot dog. That's okay, it just tastes like a hot dog. All right, all right, okay, okay. So, it doesn't taste like chicken then? Oh, for Pete's sake, what are you saying? I'm just a curious bird. That's it. That's just it. Let me tell you something. Are you ready for this? It's my hot dog. Listen, mine, 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 my hot dog. This is unbelievable. Finders keepers. And what I really said was finders keepers. I'm a curious bird about what I put it taste like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, right. I can't take it anymore. What am I supposed to do, huh? What am I supposed to do? Um, what, I, what? I think I got an idea. Oh, you do? You know what? Here you go. Hmm. Uh, I you're... think it needs mustard. Yeah. Oh, you're supposed to be a little smart. Guffling, aren't you? You said smart guffling before. Hmm. Hmm. And for our next story, I want to do a tall tale. A tall tale? That's very American. Very American? Yes, it tells stories about how America was formed. Okay. Now, this book is done with permission by Little Brown and Company, the publisher, and it's written by Marianne Hoberman. And it's, you read to me, I'll read to you very short, tall tales to read together. Okay, we're going to read this one together. We're going to read this one together. And this one is about Who? Johnny Appleseed. Oh, I've heard of Johnny Appleseed before. He was the guy that wore the tin hat. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Uh, got to have the tin pot? Okay. Yep, let's see. Okay. All right. Huh. Johnny Appleseed, huh? Who's that fellow over there? His clothes are torn, his feet are bare. He wears a saucepan for a hat. I've never seen a hat like that, never. Tell me, mister, who are you? 
And have you come from very far? I've come from Massachusetts, yes. That's pretty far away, I guess. Well, you're in Indiana now, walking barefoot. Tell me how and why you come and what you do. I've never seen a man like you. Well, when I was young and lived at home, I often leave our house in Rome. My parents had 10 girls and boys, and I'd go off to escape their noise. Where did you go to get away? Well, I went out to the woods to play. I got to know each plant and tree, and I decided what to be. Well, what did you think? What was your plan? I thought I'd be an apple man. An apple man? Explain that, please. A person who plants apple trees. I get my seeds from the cider mills, and I wander through the dales and hills, planting seeds each place I go and watching all my orchards grow. With all the orchards that you made and all that work, did you get paid? The bees worked hard and I work for free. It's the very same with me. I plant my seeds and sing my song. I don't get, I don't need much to get along. And what I get, I always spend to help old ailing horses mend. And every person is my friend. Well, you're a wonder, yes indeed. Just think of all the folks you feed. I sure am happy that you come. And by the way, what is your name? Well, it once was Chapman, first name John. Hmm. Not anymore. My old name's gone. Each place I go, they've all agreed to call me Johnny Appleseed. Hey, Appleseed? Appleseed? That, that name, name is nice. nice. Now, now when folks eat an apple slice, slice they'll think of Johnny S-H-U. You read to me and I'll read to you. These are great little stories to use. They have two or three voices, so you can get a friend, get a parent, get someone to help you read, and it's all color-coded, so everyone pick a color and read those stories. Johnny Appleseed. Johnny Appleseed. Yum, yum, yum. Apple pie, USA. We got our apple pie. Are we gonna eat now, huh? Are we gonna eat? Maybe. baseball started? Uh, no. New York City, 1845. Isn't that amazing? New York City, 1845. I didn't know that. Did you know that Jackie Robinson was the first African American allowed to play in the National uh, Baseball League? Did you know that? And that was all the way in 1945. That was, that was a long time. <laughs> so something else, the world's first World Series was done in 1918. 1918, wow, that was right during ago. the First World War. Oh, are we going to have a baseball story today? We do have a baseball story uh, today. Is it fun? Yeah. Okay, what's it called? Oh, it's the Jungle, Jungle baseball, baseball Game. One of my favorite stories to tell and read. Are you ready for the Jungle Baseball Game? Get your baseball caps out. Waka waka woo boy, let's read. Let's see. We probably need to talk about the fact that this is written uh, by Tom Paxton, and it is uh, done with permission by Morrow. Okay, here we go. Ring-a-ling-a-ling, -a -ling -a -ling, the telephone rang, way up in the coconut tree. 
Mr. Monkey ran to answer, someone's calling me. Oh, Mr. Hippo on the line. Am I getting through, yelled that hippo. Get your monkey baseball team. We want to play ball with you. When the monkey saw the hippos, all they did was laugh. <laughs> Those slow pokes, they should just be glad to get our autograph. Watching the hippos warm up, they laughed to themselves to tears, jumping around the dugout. They led their fans in cheers. Wacka, wacka, hoo boy, tie them with a rope. Poor old hippos haven't got a hope. That's what you think. Don't hmm. believe a word of it. A chimpanzee played out and left. A baboon stood in right. The orangutan on the pitcher's mound was an impressive sight. Little monkeys in the field were the quickest ones of all. For as the hippos hit the pitch, those monkeys caught the ball. As they watched the monkeys play, the challengers were glum. They could never lick the champs. The hippos fell so dumb. Missing pitches, dropping fly balls, tripping over their own feet. Nervously they thought about that team they could not be. On and on the monkeys laughed. Though no one scored a run, inning after inning, they just played for fun. Their fans were up and shouting, creatures hooped and cheered. They gobbled up the hot dogs as the popcorn disappeared. The monkeys went on jeering until the hippos cried, enough. Grimly they played harder and vowed to, huh, we're gonna show our stuff. They all buckled down and so, in spite of their great weight, they played so well that not one prancing monkey crossed the plate. Now the hippos swung their bats as if they meant to win, thumbing around the bases while their fans began to grin. The monkeys stared in wonder. They'd never been outdone. Till all at once with four base hits, <laughs> the hippos scored a run. <laughs> Now the monkeys knew they had to score or kiss the game goodbye. It was now the bottom of the ninth, time for do or die. First the chimpanzee struck out, strike three. The orangutan heard, oh, then a baboon got, uh, got a hit and ran all the way to third. Now the monkeys saw their chance. Their hopes began to rise, finally, they saw the way hmm, to beat those tubby guys. <laughs> huh. uh, still, the monkeys had two outs. Their manager chewed his hat. He could hardly bear to look as the gorilla came to bat. The gorilla stepped up to the plate and took a practice swing. Oh, his bat looked like a tree trunk when he twirled it like a sling. Then the pitcher wound up and a perfect curve she threw. Strike one, called the empire, and the next pitch was strike two. Mm. First the wind up, then the pitch, then a splitting crack. Up, up, up with the baseball sword. Would it ever be coming back? Every anxious pair of eyes searched the cloudy sky. No one there had ever seen a baseball fly so high. When the ball headed back toward the earth, a wind came from the north. It tossed the ball from side to side and blew it back and forth. Round in circles, a hippo ran, turning and spinning around until she dove it. She caught the ball and the umpire yelled, you're out. <sighs> now the game was over. The victory was sealed. All the jungle creatures cheer. The hippos took the field. What a celebration of hippo glory. Ha ha ha, hippo fame for the proud triumphant winners of the jungle baseball game. Waka waka hoo boy, time with the rope. Poor old monkeys, ha ha, they didn't have a hope. Hey, can we sing that song again? Oh yeah. Let's sing the baseball song. I gotta live down the fact that a monkey's It's lost. been nice visiting with you this time, guys. Be safe and check in a baseball game. Are we ready? We are ready. Here we go. 
so you can hear America the Beautiful. Here's one that you should know. Okay. What is the flattest state in the United States? The flattest state. It's not Alabama. They have the clay hills, the Georgia, so it's not Arkansas. Arkansas. It's not Arkansas, Tanya. The flattest state. Can, will you give me a hint? No, you should know this because it's around where you live. Florida. It's Florida. Florida is the flattest state in the United States. That's pretty cool. We don't have many hills. How many languages do you think they speak, are spoken in New York City? Four. It's over 200. 200, 200 or more languages in one city. That's pretty cool. Now this guy, George Washington Carver, an African American, he invented 300 uses for the peanuts. Can you name a use? Peanut butter? Peanut butter. Uh, what about soap, hand lotion, and glue for the little old peanut? Hats no off way. to George Washington Carver. Let's see if I got one more. Let's see. It's got some really cool things in here. Things. Here's one for you kids. What's the most popular crayon color in the United States? The most popular one that's used all the time, and you have to get a new one. Anybody? Can you? Blue. How did you know that? Favorite. It's blue. Blue is the most popular color in the United States. So those are just a few fast facts, weird but true stories about the United States. So check it out at the Bay County Public Library. 